Hey everyone, Brooke the Broker here. So you are absolutely going to start hearing headlines, if you haven't already, that sales are down in 2022 over 2021. And I think people who don't work in the residential real estate field would expect this, unless you've been living under a rock for the last two years. But what really is going on in the market right now? Stay tuned. Before I begin, I want to ask you a favor. There are very few subscribers to my channel. And as you know, I share a lot of amazing information that is timely and very important to you and your future and your financial well-being. So please hit the subscribe button below so you're kept abreast of all of these market updates. I'm gonna be doing a lot of them as things are changing in this real estate market. And if you know of someone who you think could really love the information we share here, share our page with them, encourage them to subscribe. I don't get money for this. I do this for you guys. So I wanna make sure uh, we spread the word. So please hit the subscribe button and uh, help us out. I would greatly appreciate it. I have tons of notes. I have tons of stats. I've done a lot of research and I am here to tell you what in the heck has been going on in the real estate market from January through June. So the first half of 2022. And yes, the number of homes that have sold this year is lower. The number of homes is lower than it was this time last year. It's actually down in the Fredericksburg area by about 11%. So 11% fewer homes are selling. That is not an 11% decrease in value, okay? That is just in the number of homes that are selling. But the average sales price of these homes is actually higher than it has ever been. So what's going on? This is probably a little bit confusing to you, but what I wanna share with you are the absolute facts. This is not my opinion. These are the facts. These are the actual numbers. This is not what feeling I had or what my clients have experienced in the last week. I wanna tell you exactly what's going on. So let's go. I want to put things into perspective for you. I think the best way to analyze what has happened so far in 2022 is not to look at what happened in 2021 or 2020. Those two years were the most unusual years in the real estate business. So I think the best way to analyze what's going on in our market is to compare the first half of 2022 to the first half of the very last normal year we had in real estate, which was 2019. And 2019 was an amazing real estate market. So let's see how 2022 compares to 2019. And I think that will give you a better idea of actually what is going on in our market. Okay, here are my stats, guys. I'll break out my iPad right here. In 2019, the medium sales price of a home was 305000 and today, at the end of June, so far this year, it is 425000 That's 39% higher, and that higher, that rise in prices that happened that dramatically, that 39%, that's because of 2020 and 2021, okay? Prices are continuing to go, but not at 39%, guys. So they're going at a much slower, more reasonable rate. And I believe the median sales price is probably gonna stick right around that 425 to 430 by the end of the year, but that's 13% above 2021, guys, okay? So prices are still going in the right direction. In 2019, by the end of June, 3,344 houses had sold in the Fredericksburg area. In 2022, 3,889 houses have sold. 
that 16.3% more houses have sold in the first half of this year compared to the very last normal year. I think that's doing quite well, don't you? But get this, at the end of June in 2019, there were 1,653 houses on the market for sale. So 1,653 houses were active on the market, available for sale. And at the end of June this year, there were only 866. That's almost 50% fewer homes even available to sell. So the supply is way far down compared to 2019. And that's why in my predictions video, I say that we're gonna have an inventory problem the second half of the year. Well, there you go, folks, it's right there. We have half the number of homes on the market than we did at the beginning of 2019. So if we're gonna compare the number of homes that sell to the number of houses that are on the market, we call that our months of supply. And that's how we measure if it's a buyer or seller's market, okay? So in 2019, at the end of June, there was a 2.97 month supply. So almost a three month supply of homes on the market. That is a seller's market, okay? But in 2022, at the end of June, there's only 1.37 month supply on the market. That is still a very strong seller's market. So we are still in a very strong seller's market and compared to our last normal year, oh my gosh, it's even more of a seller's market. This doesn't mean it takes a month and a half to sell a house though, okay? So in 2019, on average, it was taking um, 44 days to sell a house, okay? First half of the year, 2019, on average, it was taking 44 days for a home from when it goes active on the market to when it goes under contract. First half of this year, the average was 16 days. Now that is getting longer in case you didn't realize, and that is part of what happens when the demand goes down and the supply goes down, but the demand goes down a little bit. It does take a little bit longer for houses to sell, but holy moly, 44 days back in 2019, and people are freaking out because it takes more than two hours to sell their house, okay? Come on, guys, let's get realistic. So as you can see, if we compare 2022 to 2021, everything is gonna appear as worse. But 2021 was the most unusual year in real estate ever, and it was fueled by the lowest mortgage rates ever in the history of mortgages. And it will probably never go back to that. So that was kind of a, an artificial fuel right there that helped increase demand. And we already had a low inventory environment. We already had a low supply environment. And then we really boosted demand because more people could afford these homes. And of course that drives the prices up but we're not gonna go back to those interest rates for a very long time if we ever do, guys. So it was fueled by a very unusual force. So let's talk about mortgage rates for a little bit. I know some people are freaking out because mortgage rates are above 5% and a year and a half ago, they could have gotten a house for free basically, but let's see where mortgage rates were in 2019, a normal year, okay? In 20. 19, the average mortgage interest rate was 3.94%, just below 4%. That was the average. That was the average for the entire year of 2019. And today, like this week, this week, the average is 5.78. And at the end of the year, I'll be able to see what the average is for the year. But rates are moving back and forth between like five and six, kind of back and forth, but that's only like a 1% increase over where it was in 2019, okay? And in 2019, we had really good demand, but we had more supply than we did today. So I think the interest rates are really not having as much of an impact as people want it to have, okay? 
But the real deal is this, guys. There are still more buyers out there than houses for sale. There were less than 900 houses on the market in the entire Fredericksburg area. That is Stafford, all of Stafford, all of Spotsylvania, all of Orange, all of Caroline, all of King George, and all of Fredericksburg City. Less than 900 houses, guys. And I know there's more than 900 people looking for houses. For heaven's sakes, we have, I think, over 1,800 real estate agents in the area. So there's a lot going on that you don't really get to see. With When supply and demand are equal, we will see the amount of time it takes to sell a house is going to increase to about 60 to 90 days. Okay? So we know that demand is higher than supply right now because homes are selling in less than 60 days. They're selling in 16 days. And week by week, that does change. The average this past week was 25. 25 is still significantly below 60. And you know what? If prices do stabilize, you're going to be just fine. If you bought a house in the last two years, or if you refinanced, you have a fixed rate mortgage. You're going to be paying the same payment for the next 15 or 30 years if you keep that house and your payments are going to be the same and you are in a market where the value is going to go up. So if you are going to be moving in a couple of years, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Okay. Do not worry about it. And just think about this. If rates go lower, if they go back down to that 2.25% refinance, it's a no brainer. You can do it. Okay. Uh, if you're also lucky, if you're lucky, you bought your house with a VA loan or an FHA loan, because when it time comes time to sell your house, a future buyer can just take over your loan at the 2.25% and they save a ton of money and it makes your house more valuable and makes it more appealing to another buyer. So if you bought in the last couple of years with a VA or FHA loan, or you refinanced in the last couple of years with a VA or FHA loan, you have some advantages out there, guys. So look at my video, I'm linking it at the end about loan assumptions. I'm doing one right now. I'm selling a home that is offering a loan assumption to a buyer. People are really interested in that. So that is a tool you can use as well. The market is great. The market is great, guys. As a matter of fact, the feeling we have about the market is that it's so much more relaxed, so much more professional. Everyone gets an opportunity to take time. They get to see houses before they make offers on them. The people are not competing with 20 or 30 folks and giving away their firstborn child in a trip to the Dominican Republic to get a house, okay? We're seeing negotiations happen again. We're seeing home inspections happen again. We're seeing great things. That is normal, guys. Do not feel threatened by hearing you may have to negotiate. That's part of the deal. That's part of the deal. So you guys are gonna be fine. Um, buyers can refinance as late rates get lower if that's what they're concerned with. They can assume the seller's mortgage to reduce their rate. And these headlines that you're gonna be hearing are comparing this year to the most unusual two years ever in real estate, okay? Now, if you think we're headed towards a crash, I'm gonna put another video together that compares the first half of 2022 to the first half of 2007. 2007, is when we had the crash. It wasn't 2008, it was 2007 is when the real estate crash began. So I'll do another video about that. But if you have any questions about the market where we are, put them in the comments below. I'd love to put other videos together to share what's going on. And guys, this is not my opinion. These are absolute facts. So if you would like to argue about the facts, I would love to see your facts that you are using and where you pulled that data. I pulled all of this data directly from our multiple listing system and in our local area. Now you might be in another part of the country and the market is very different than it is here, 
But these are the facts for the Fredericksburg area in Virginia, our market. I hope this was valuable to you. I know this was a long video, but I wanna make sure you are well informed, you know what's going on. Check out my bold predictions video for the second half of the year. Check out my loan assumption video so you know all about that. And stay tuned for my update on 2022 compared to the crash year of 2007. See you soon.